Well, there you go. What colour is the wind? Charlie Lansbury, you're very welcome indeed. Oh, it's great to be here with you. Thanks, mate. You're looking very dapper as well. <laughs> That's never been said of me very often, you know. You're turning out very well these days. Thanks to me, wife. Business, business must be good, Charlie. Business has been great considering the hard times we're in, you know. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've been all around the UK just recently. You've just finished your tour, haven't you? Finished in Belfast last Monday, uh, Monday night. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, were you all around Ireland as well? We, did, we only did a week there, which is unusual for me because uh, I've been going back and forth from Ireland ever since I got my break all those years ago. Yeah. But a uh, short but wonderful break in Ireland. But you had been going to Ireland uh, a, lot, a long time previous to your big break, haven't you? I was. I, I became great friends with uh, Tony Allen of Foster and Allen. Yeah. And they invited me there in the first place. And I always remember the first trip over. I came in fear and trepidation thinking, an Englishman going into Ireland, you know. And I was there like a day and I realised how stupid that was. And yeah. uh, I was just playing in little pubs and things. But there was a lovely, funny story which came out of it. I played, uh, I went into the Palace Bar in Athlone, which is run by a, a great friend of ours. And uh, playing was James Shannon, a wonderful uh, yeah, accordion, uh, accordion player yeah. and a great act himself. And he says, our two famous people have just walked in, our own Tony Allen and a marvellous singer-songwriter from... Liverpool, he said, Charlie Lansbury. And of course, nobody had heard of me and nobody knew me. And I sat down and they were all saying, Charlie, who, you know, they'd all heard of Tony, obviously. And this bloke sat next to me and we had a lovely conversation and a couple of pints. And as he, he, he said to me, Charlie, is that right? You wrote the songs? I said, I wrote some. He said, what did you write? And I said, I wrote part of me. I will love you all my life. And he said, are you sure? I've never heard of them. I said, it doesn't matter. I'm not at all offended. That's OK, you know. He got up to go, and as he was halfway to the door, he stopped and he turned around and he said, God bless you, Charlie Landry. He said, I enjoyed your company very much. Have a marvellous holiday in Ireland. And next time you write a song, would you write a bloody song I've heard of? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I've arrived in the right place, Richard, and I've yeah. loved it ever since, you know? Definitely, definitely. Um, early career. What was your early career? Well, I, I did a whole host of jobs while I was sort of making my way gradually to where I am now, but... Uh, I just played in local pubs and things. In fact, I played in one pub on the dockside of Birkenhead for 22 years, which must be some sort of a record. Absolutely. Uh, but all the way along the line, I was writing of a night time and hoping upon hope that some musical fairy godmother would come and rescue me. And were you, you know? combining this with the day job then as well? I was. I did a whole succession of jobs. I mean, I've been a navvy, I've been a driver, I've been down and out, I've been in the army, I was a grocery store manager, railways, flour mills. You name it. And latterly, I was a teacher for 14 years. But the dream was always a musical one, really. You were a teacher for 14 years? I was, Was yeah. this in uh, Birkenhead? Yeah, in the same area where I lived. And uh, it was funny. Because that must have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, part of it was. And part of it, I mean, I was so glad to leave. People had this misconception that you were having a wonderful time. And it must have been a real, you know, strain to pull away from it. Yeah. I was so delighted when the Irish people rescued me. Because uh, yeah. it was so stressful. But at the same time, it had wonderful aspects to it. And uh, I, I used to get requests in the playground. Hey, sir, my mum said, will you play crazy for her tonight in the pub? You know? <laughs> so everybody knew what it, where my heart really lay. But right. I haven't said that, I met wonderful kids and wonderful staff who are still friends now. Yeah. That's brilliant. Are you still in, uh, you're still based in Birkenhead, then, are you? I am, yeah, although even with people the, in Birkenhead seem lovely, to live in Ireland. With a lovely lady? Yes, with my wife Thelma, who was, Thelma, uh, yeah. we've been together now for 40 years, as the old song said. 40, 40 years. plus, yeah. That's marvellous. And uh, yeah, I'm still there, and I don't think I could leave it. I love Ireland, I love Australia, but I think uh, I'll still be walking the streets my father walked, you know, till the end of my days, because uh, I love the character of my own town. And the, I the think so. I, I think that's one of the things people like about you, Charlie. You're if your feet still on the ground, even after the massive success, I mean, you worked very hard for 30 years, of course, um, but even after the massive success now that you, you've had over the last eight years, um, the feet's still there on the ground, isn't it? Well, I always disliked pomp and circumstance and arrogance in anybody, that, and I thought, God, deliver me from that, you know. I, I hope yeah. that would never show itself in me. And thankfully, I'm surrounded by people who, if you did <laughs> start to get ideas above yourself, would soon put you back in your box, okay. you know. So... And I love where I, where I come from. Uh, I know people who've grown up and denied that they ever lived in a sort of rough area that, say, we did. Uh, but I love where I came from. And that's part of who I am. And the people that I've known all my life, I still know. And I love, you know, and uh, I don't see any reason to want to change, you know. Charlie, your, your appearance um, is very unique. <laughs> and um, 
I suppose if I met you on a dark night, <laughs> I'd be um, not worried, but I, I, I'd, I'd um, I don't know what the word would be, but I, 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 you, you remind me of, of, of... The cheer and shroud or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, I take that as a compliment because I am Good. a great believer. Yeah. I'm a very ordinary fella and, uh, you know, I, I constantly get Have you people. had this said to you before? I'm sure you have. Lots of times. Yeah. I mean, and I hear lads in the street going past saying, just past Jesus down there, like, did you see him? You know, which I don't mind if I remind him even, you know, temporarily yeah. of him. That's great, you know, because... It must be lovely, though, the same. Well, you know, I'm not trying... I'm, I'm trying my best to be as good as I can, but, yeah. uh, you know... I'm only Charlie Lambs. <laughs> but it's a nice, it's, 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 a, it's a lovely compliment, isn't it, really? It's a fantastic compliment. If, 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 yeah. if, if you are reminding people of, of the good Lord, I think that's marvellous. Oh, absolutely, and I don't take exception to that at all. They, yeah. they did a funny thing, actually. I did um, a game show in, in Dublin, and they had two pianos. I forget the name of it, but there was a pianist in the middle and two celebrities, a boy and a girl, either side of the... And I was one of the celebrities. And the following day in the Irish Independence, it had this wonderful haggard face of me, you know, the, the long hair. And it said, um, RTE pulled off a coup last night. They managed to, uh, to bring on board the Turing Shroud. <laughs> but that's exactly what I looked like on it, you know. Yeah. But, no, yeah. I take that as a compliment. But it's great. Um, now, you're uh, a super songwriter and you've written Thank you. massive hits for lots of different people. Tell us some of the people you've written for. Well, the nice thing of the, that, that came about through the songwriting is the people that I've met. I mean, uh, and, and have become since become great friends. Great friends people yeah. like Daniel O'Donnell, mm -hmm. uh, lovely people, Foster and Allen, George Hamilton the Fourth, Jack Jones, uh, yeah. and a lot of the Irish artists like Dominic Kerwin and uh, Mary Duff. Uh, mm -hmm. have, in fact, a lot of my success sort of stemmed from Ireland yeah. and the Irish. And it must be a great boost when top um, artists like that uh, will take your songs and record them. Well, somebody once said to me a long time back, you can't consider yourself a songwriter till other people like your songs enough to, for them to record. And thankfully now that's happened because when I started out, I didn't really have any self-belief in my ability to write anything. Yeah. And I sent a song across the, uh, uh, the Atlantic to somebody in America thinking, well, if they laugh at it, nobody's going to know about it back home, you know. Mm -hmm. But I got this glowing thing back saying, Charlie, we love the song, we've placed it in Nashville. And that gave me great encouragement. And... It's wonderful when somebody else deems your song good enough, especially people of the statute of Daniel and yeah. Foster and Allen, go and record it. And it's lovely to hear their sort of interpretation of your song. Exactly. Charlie, we'll take a little break. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Welcome back. We're talking to international recording star Charlie Lansbury. Welcome back, Charlie. It's great to be here. Uh, the Christmas period, would that have been busy for you? No, uh, but hectic in a very nice way because, like most people, I spend it with my family and I've got five grandkids now who I absolutely adore, you know. I said, I've looked like a granddad all my life and now I am one five times over. And uh, it's all about, apart from the good Lord himself, it's about family, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, now, how many children have you, Charlie? I've got three grown sons. Uh, okay. You know, they're getting on a bit now, you know, not as okay. old as me. But Now, does one of the lads play in the band with you? Will be doing. I think, uh, but two of them are in a band of their own, but it's a bit different than what I do. It's, it's right. a bit heavy and a bit bluesy and a bit rocky, you know. You'd fit but, uh, in very well there, Charlie. <laughs> well, I might look like that, but I don't sound <laughs> no, like that, no. no. Uh, and one of the lads may join you then? One of the lads, Jamie, is a fine uh, acoustic guitar player mm. and a fine singer in his own right, so I'm thinking, yeah. toying with the idea of bringing him on board and having him do some harmonies with me. Yeah. Charlie, what makes a good song? I think if you can write something that's sort of uh, everybody's experienced, but put it in a new way, so that whenever anybody hears it, they think, I know what he's talking about. Yeah. And I think simplicity is the most difficult thing to achieve. I mean, you listen to wonderful songs like, say, um, Smile, for example. Hardly any lyrics there, but it's everything that needs to be said is said in that short space, mm. and you accompany that with a wonderful melody. And I think that's it. And that will live on forever. So my aspiration is to write something that good that people will want to sing in a hundred years' time or something. Yeah. But it's very difficult to, to categorise exactly what's going to work and what's not going to work. Yeah. Did you it. ever think um, when you uh, wrote What Colour Is The Wind that it would be such a massive, massive hit? No, I did not at all. I mean, in fact, I wasn't too sure of it. Uh, I was given the title uh, by the singer-songwriter from Blackpool and I went home and I thought, what a fantastic title this blind child had actually said to the father. And I wrote the song and I played it to my middle son, Alan, who's very honest. 
Yeah. Uh, sometimes bluntly honest. And I said, is this okay, Al? And I played it. He said, yeah, that's all right, Dad. He said, it's quite surreal, that. You'll be okay with that. And then I played it and got this fantastic response to it and kept on playing it. And uh, ultimately, that song and Forever Friend, they did the trick for me and gave yeah. me this life that I'd sought all my life, really. I mean, they were massive, massive hits, weren't they? Now, I know about the same time uh, that you wrote What Colour Is The Wind, that became a massive, massive hit in Ireland itself, didn't it? Well, it was Ireland that did the whole thing for me. Yeah. I mean, I had received yet another rejection, one of many down the years, and uh, I came away from the phone at home thinking, ah, perhaps I should pack this in, I'm getting on a bit, and, you know, uh, <laughs> I haven't got it, you know, in this business you need good looks and youth, and I had neither, you see, so I thought maybe I should give it a, you know, give it the heave-ho, but the next day I thought, no, uh, the only thing I can do well, the best gift God gave me, is musical. I'm going yeah. to plod on. And the only thing I could think of was RTE in Dublin. And I phoned the Pat Kenny show and asked rather tentatively, would they be interested in having me? And he said, Charlie, we've been trying to get you for about a month or so. Can you come this week? And I went with just a guitar and a set of pedals I used to play with my feet. Sang two songs, which uh, Pat extended the show at the end to allow me to sing a second. Went home after a wonderful weekend in Dublin. And the following week, my son picked me up from school and said, Dad, you're in the Irish charts. And I said, oh, mate, 98. And I would have been delighted with that because I'd never been in a chart in my life. And he said, no, Dad, you're number two. And the following week, I was number one. And uh, all of Ireland went out and bought that song. <laughs> so I have, uh, you know, I'm eternally grateful mm. uh, to the Irish people because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. What's for the future, Charlie? Well, I never look too far ahead, you know. You've just celebrated your birthday? I have, yeah. Do you dare want to tell us? Oh, I'll tell you, I'm 69 years of age and I still feel like uh, 69 years of age. Mm. You look no. good. You look good for us as well, of course. Uh, well, I feel good because I'm doing what I love and I'm surrounded by people I like. I've got a lovely family. So I'm a very blessed and fortunate person. What, was, uh, what does the good lady think about all this success, Thelma? Well, she's delighted because for years she's while I was playing in the pubs, she was sat in the house minding the kids and the dog and everything. Mm -hmm. And as this success arrived late, all the kids had grown. So now we jet set round the world, you know, doing different things. And the lads sit and they said, it's great this, Dad. You and me mams jet set near there and everywhere. And we're here looking after the kids and washing the dishes, looking after the dog and washing the dishes. So she waited long enough and she worked hard for it, Thelma, you know. So it's good mm -hmm. that she's able to enjoy it as well. And uh, she goes uh, to a lot of the places with you, doesn't she? She goes everywhere, yeah. yeah. I can't shrug it off at all. And does she know. pick up the paycheck at the end? or Some of it. <laughs> Some of it. No, Unless you get there uh, first. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. we have a great time. We meet fantastic people and I'm yeah. doing the thing that I love. So uh, very, very fortunate. And I thank the Almighty every night mm -hmm. for the gift that he gave me and the places it's taken me to. And I know you were very humble in the early stages because I, I remember a, a story, I think you had... You had told about uh, the time when you were put into the uh, the hotel for the first time by by the record company tell That's us a bit right. about that well i couldn't believe it they put me into a suite and we used to me and thelma used to sleep in what we call the volvo hotel we couldn't afford uh, even like b and b's and things and we thought we'd gone up market when we got a sleeping bag each you know <laughs> so we thought we'd really arrived then but when i this success arrived and they put me in the burlington hotel in dublin mm -hmm. uh, in this wonderful suite I kept walking in and out the other room, even if I said, I'm going to make the full use of this, you know, I might never get this again, you know. So even if I only walked in and sat in, I thought, well, I'm a sweet, you know. Mm. And I remember sat on the bed, and the little story at the time, I think I told, was about my father sat on the back step filing a hate me uh, to put in a shilling meter yeah. at the time. And I said, that's wrong, that, Dad, you shouldn't be doing that. And he said, Charlie, son, he said, if I don't do this, we won't have any lights on. And I was sort of telling him off, and years later, in this little two up and two down, who was sat on the step filing his own hate me but me, you know, and looking up and saying, I'm sorry about this, Dad. And she reminded me of that, Thelma reminded me of that when we sat on this very grand bed in this wonderful suite in the Burlington Hotel in Dublin. So it was fantastic. Yeah. It must be great now, Charlie, going to uh, venues and um, playing to audiences who have come to see you, obviously, uh, but playing your original songs to an audience that absolutely just sits and takes it all in. I don't think there's any nicer feeling than to create something that brings pleasure to other people. And uh, once you've done it, through something you love yourself, to create mm. something that you know has touched, moved, helped, lifted somebody, 
I think that's the nicest drug in the world. And once you've done it, you want to continue to do it. You know, it's a, it's a real blessing. And to go out every night and play to people who've gone out of the way, got babysitters and taxis and things, and come to see you perform songs that you, I never thought would see the light of day. You know, yeah. is a, it's a, an absolute joy. So, what can we expect of Charlie Lansbury over the next couple of years? Uh, well, I hope no car accidents <laughs> because I've just recently yeah, had just, one. But well, I've just recorded, recently recorded, finished recording an album uh, of completely of love songs, other people's love songs, which is to be released sometime in March or April or something like that. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, even though I'm a bit sort of, you know, I'd like something of my own to be on. And there. these are cover versions, are they, Charlie? These are cover versions of great love songs. Why did you, Why did you go for that? It wasn't me, it was the record company. Okay. They said they're, they're trying to introduce me to a, a wider, wider market. Yeah. So I don't know whether that's going to work or not. But yeah. I've gone along with it because there's fantastic writers out there. Yeah. So it's nice to pay homage to some of them. And then uh, the spring tour, as we always do, and then our trip around uh, the UK again in the autumn. Yeah. Uh, and who knows, you know, I'm back to Australia. So uh, it's wonderful because you never know where the music will take you. I mean, I never yeah. dreamed when I was sitting in the pub that one day I'd be... Yeah. Sat here talking to you, you know. Yeah. Fantastic what it does. Um, Australia, of course, uh, you're, make, you're making a big mark out there at the moment, aren't you? Well, I first went, went and I, it coincided with Daniel's trip, and Daniel was incredibly kind to me, brought me on stage and introduced me to his audience. And In fact, we went to church one Sunday morning, and it was hilarious on the night time. He says, I can't do Daniel, forgive me trying to talk. He says, do you know, he says, we went into church this morning, he says, and half the congregation nearly passed away. They thought it was the second coming. <laughs> but Australia, I love. I love the space, I love the climate, and most importantly of all, the people. The people, Foster and Alan, Tony Allen said to me, Charlie, the, Auss the Aussies are like the Irish. In other words, laid back, what you see is what you get. Yeah. You don't have to know somebody for two years to find out what they're all about. Yeah. Uh, I just love the place, it's fantastic. Charlie, you're uh, an artist who certainly hasn't uh, had the success overnight, that's for sure. You've put <laughs> a lot of hard work in. Uh, you've really had to work hard. Um, what advice would you give a new up-and-coming budding writer? Um, I would say to them, uh, be inspired by other people, but strive to be your own person musically. It's great to take sort of influences from here, there and everywhere. Everybody's done, me included. But then to strive to find something uniquely your own. Uh, I'm used to, I used to admire, say, Dylan and the Beatles and all these wonderful writers. But then you think, well, I, I'm just Charlie Lanzer, I'm not them. So I would say strive to be your own person musically. Don't be put off by rejection because everybody's been rejected. Me, many times. But even people as great as Elvis Presley and the Beatles were rejected. So yeah. don't be disheartened by that. Be yourself and don't lose heart and put a bit of faith in the man upstairs. Charlie, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we wish you the very best for the year coming. It's been a pleasure, mate. Uh, we wish you uh, a very happy and peaceful new year. Thank you, Richard. And we hope that the success keeps coming because if anybody deserves it, it's certainly you. That's thank you so kind. much for joining us and God bless you. We'll it's a pleasure. You God bless you, Richard. Thanks for having me. Take care. God bless you.